At the end of the day, if they don't, if they don't explain why there's clones, I'm canceling my pre-order. Yeah. It's really the principle of the thing. Yes. Did you get him? Hey. That's so stupid. Just hit each other. Yeah, just bouncing off. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened to my fingers then? What the? We. <laughs> I can hear him. No, the guy on the gun. He's close. Where no, no, no. He's hey, in the stack home. Get him, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold get on, wait. <laughs> go, go, go. Charge. Uh... Bang. <laughs> oh my god. I actually broke my game. <laughs> it just froze for a second. What the f- You did it. Dude, that hand is so messed up. Is there more stud? Oh, there's more over there, yeah. Can you get him? Da-da. Da-da. Da -da. Mm. Good guy. Yeah, there's a guy right there. Go on, go on, Jack. Charge. Get him, Jack. Da-da. Where is he? Bang. Did you get him? Huh? Yeah, he did. I couldn't see him. It's the same guy. Major Hazard. He's killed him guy. twice. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, there are some Battlefield players, and what they do is they go, right, I really like this gun here, and it might be an emplacement or whatever, and you kill them, and they just run directly back to that emplacement. They don't they don't deviate from their way of playing Battlefield. Because they, they, think, they think it's a casual game, you can do what you want. Remember fun, BF5. Don't really think I'm going to be playing much more of this, to be honest, with 2042 coming out in the next couple of weeks. COD Vanguard, new Warzone map. Halo Infinite, among a load of other stuff, I'm sure. Big surprises on the way. I just don't see it being in the regular rotation of games that I play. And to be honest, I haven't really touched BF5 for a few weeks anyway. Saying that though, this game is still incredibly popular. Every day on Steam, it gets about 40,000 total players. That's just Steam. And then you've got everyone playing it on Origin all the people on Xbox and PlayStation. So the reality is that there's probably over 100,000 people a day still playing BF5, despite the fact that there hasn't been any new content for it since the end of April in 2020. And this game was released originally in November 2018, three years ago. And when we look at what 2042 is doing, BF5 may be the last ever traditional battlefield game and what i mean by that is one that has a single player multiplayer co-op to a certain degree a live service that included a battle royale game mode in firestorm so i don't think we'll ever get a battlefield game with that similar style again where you've got a wealth of options how to play the game 2042 multiplayer only battlefield's doing what it does best and I'd hazard a guess, looking at the industry and the competition right now, that the next Battlefield game will be free to play and multiplayer only. I feel like that's an inevitability at this point. So BF5 for me is almost the last of its kind, if my assumptions are correct. And I definitely had some fun with this game. Big fan of the gunplay, I've always said that. They introduced some really interesting movement mechanics in this too. Fortification, some saw it as a gimmick, some really enjoyed it. I never really used it that much, but I would always see people building stuff. But the most thing that I built was an invisible staircase into the sky that almost killed me in real life. The soundtrack in this game as well. Oh, phenomenal. I sometimes just load up the Spotify playlist when I'm doing a boring task, editing, accounting, whatever it might be. And it just stirs me on. There are so many amazing tracks on this. And it was put together by Johan Soderquist and Patrick Andren. The BF main theme, brilliant. And then you've got some triumphant tracks that play in the background when you're about to win a game of Breakthrough. Alongside that, some swelling, incredibly dramatic pieces that remind me of James Bond at times. There's a bit of Inception in there too, I think. It's all very epic and emotional. The live service wasn't great. It was delayed by about six months from what I recall. We had the whole TTK situation at Christmas after it launched, and then the game slowly phasing attrition out almost completely. And sadly, we never got to see the most iconic battles of World War II. DICE decided to cancel development of the game instead to focus on the next title, 2042. I'd have loved to storm Normandy Beach in this game, fight through Carantan, shotgun my way through the streets of Stalingrad with rubble flying and being destroyed all around me. Would have been awesome, maybe another time.
But at least we'll get the Battle of the Bulge and El Alamein in Battlefield Portal. And from the snippets that we've seen of those so far, they look fantastic. And you'll be able to create a genuine World War II experience in Portal with the original BF-1942 classes as well. Definitely looking forward to that one. Sniping in this game too, I think was just so satisfying. The sound, the bullet velocity, the reload animations, the headshot noise. I think they just nailed it, honestly. It was already pretty good in BF1, but you had the sweet spot mechanic as well that was quite controversial. But in BF5, one hit kill, only a headshot. And it made those headshots so damn good. Apparently you guys really enjoyed watching it too. Most of my Battlefield 5 videos performed exceptionally well for me. Always had great engagement, views, watch time. So there has to be something there. Firestorm though, kind of crazy to think that that was actually part of Battlefield 5. Criterion, I think, did a phenomenal job with the map. It looked incredible. Arguably, still the most detailed Battle Royale map on the market. Because this had destruction as well. And it was massive. I had some great experience here in Battlefield's first ever BR game mode. Unfortunately, Firestorm didn't get any post-launch support. And you had to buy Battlefield 5 if you wanted to play Firestorm. Massive $60 paywall there in a world of free-to-play battle royales. It was never going to work. And Firestorm really wasn't ever given a chance to spread its wings and evolve into something. And I've said this a thousand times before, but if they approach this differently in the future, do a Frostbite Battle Royale, separate it from Battlefield. I think they've got some great tech there. Could be incredibly popular if it's done the right way. There were many things about BF5 though that didn't resonate so well with people. I think the enter and exit animations, most people saw them as annoying rather than adding to the immersion of the game. And it meant that certain epic moments that you could pull off in Battlefield in the past just weren't possible in this game or made them incredibly difficult. Some of the cosmetics too, some people felt that they strayed a bit too far into the fantasy elements rather than keeping it as grounded as possible. And also for me personally, I would have loved a bit more robust weapon customization. I know with it being World War II, options are limited, but it's nice to see that in 2042, we are getting some of that BF4 style customization for guns back on the table, as well as the plus system. The usefulness of that is yet to be decided. We'll have to wait and see. Wrapping things up, I'm sure there'll come a point when I play BF5 again, but for now, I'll leave it on the back burner, free up some hard drive space. Maybe revisit it in a couple of years and see how it fares. With that said, thank you for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts on BF5 down in the comments below. Are you still playing it? Have you stopped completely or never really played it at all in the first place? I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.